The RX 6600 is one of the best value for money graphics cards you can get for 1080p gaming in the world of PC. However, there's actually another variant of it called the RX 6600M, and this was intended for mobile laptop users. However, people on AliExpress brands have figured out how to take this laptop chip, put it on a desktop PCB, and make it so that it works flawlessly with a desktop gaming PC. And today we're going to be testing out this graphics card right here from a brand called Milzy or MLLSE. And it's actually on paper got the exact same specifications as the RX 6600 desktop variant. However, there is a little bit of a twist in its favor. So let's run this card not only against the desktop variant, but also against the RTX 3060, RTX 2060, and GTX 1060. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So getting straight into those 1080p gaming benchmark numbers here at high settings on all six titles, we tested out Borderlands 3 here first. And this was scoring the best average FPS against the four other graphics cards, even against the desktop variant. And you may be wondering, Brian, how is this mobile variant beating out the desktop variant? And we'll talk about that a little bit later. It does have to do with the tuning because both these graphics cards are only awarded a 100 watt P limit out of the box. And so the out of the box settings does present an interesting scenario for this GPU. But moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider showed us the exact same thing. The mobile variant was beating out the desktop variant. And there is some interesting tests that we do later as well, because you guys always want to know about the undervolting. But let's move over now to Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, where we've got this on Vulcan API, and it's scoring the best out of all the five graphics cards here. And then moving over to Fire Cry 6, this is on high settings. And we've got, again, a win for the RX 6600M. And then moving on to Fortnite, 1080p high settings. DX11, because DX12, I find, does tend to stutter a bit more than DX11. And so here we got 185 FPS, again, pulling out a victory over its own desktop counterpart, at least the Gigabyte Eagle, and then beating out the RTX 3060 quite comfortably. Then moving on to the last title here, Apex Legends. And this was at high settings with one of the settings set to insane. That's the spot shadow details. I do recommend turning this down to at least high if you want a smooth experience. But I found at this setting, because I started benchmarking on this setting, I found the cards were presenting better 1% lows, but more specifically, much better 0.1% lows. And this is where I switched over now to a little bit of custom tuning with this card. And where it's a little bit of an enigma, this card, where it installs as a mobile variant on your desktop, except it does use the exact same driver set as the RX 6600. And what I find in this driver set is that you cannot tune the memory at all. If I tried to tune the memory and up the speeds, it would actually just default the main big clock speed on the core down to like 500 megahertz. So I couldn't really touch the memory speeds in terms of speeds, but I could enable the fast timing setting. And this did help with also undervolting the card. And here's where I undervolted the card and I actually came out with much better 0.1% lows in Apex Legends. So even though I was getting a little bit less performance, I actually dropped the wattage down and I actually then also got those 0.1% lows to pick up a little bit. So out of the box, this card has a 1050 millivolt default setting, as opposed to the Gigabyte Eagle, for example, that's got 1150 millivolt. So essentially for the desktop variant, it's getting more voltage pumped into it, even at that same 100 watt figure, which makes it that I feel maybe the 6600M is actually a better piece of silicon than the RX 6600 desktop variant. However, going over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, here is where I tested all the wattage settings. This is on a 12900K outfit. However, what we'll see here is that it performs pretty much identical in terms of its power consumption versus the desktop variant, but it also beats out the RTX 3060. And when we undervolt it, you can shave off 36 watts with only losing a slight bit of FPS, but also picking up those 0.1% lows in a title like Apex Legends. And you may be stopping me there and saying, why pick Apex Legends? And that's because out of all these titles I test here today, and actually pretty much out of all PC titles, Apex Legends is extremely well optimized for PC users. So if there's 0.1% lows that are becoming choppy in this game, it's usually either because your software, that is your Windows install, has something wrong with it, or the hardware has something wrong with it. In the case of the RX 6500 XT, 
when I tested that, it performed terrible in Apex Legends. It was actually a really bad experience where it would sometimes even chop on the latest and greatest platform like a 12900K, for example. And so I found that card, you couldn't tune it either at all because it was locked out in the driver set. However, the RX 6600M allows us to overcome that problem and mitigate it via tuning in the Radeon Wattman software. So with those details out of the way, it's time to focus on the Millsy hardware itself, where this RX 6600M actually surprisingly has decent build quality. It weighs a shade over 600 grams, and comparing that to the Eagle desktop variant, that weighs about 650 grams, and the RTX 3060 we used in today's comparison weighs a little over 400 grams. So it is a little solid card for a two fan solution. It's also got a single eight pin power connector and is a two slot unit. And I'll put the dimensions up on the screen for you as well as having one HDMI 2.0 out and three displays out. It works at PCIe 4.0 X8, just like its desktop counterpart. And it will work perfectly fine over PCIe 3.0 as well. Though in terms of the temperatures, 26 degree ambient in this room, and it scores around 64 degrees out of the box. It's default configuration. If you undervolt it, we got that down to 56 degrees. So I always highly recommend undervolting these newer cards because the card is just gonna last longer itself and you're gonna be saving power from the wall with minimal drop in performance. And in this case, you're actually gonna be gaining in the 0.1% low area. However, I am getting told in the comments that some of these cards from AliExpress are actually used chiplets that are soldered on to a brand new PCB. And when I checked this card, I pulled it apart and everything looked actually brand new from top to bottom. Checking the silicon closely, the RX 6600M die, that also looks brand new as well. It doesn't look like it was used in any way, shape or form. So at least this brand right here, this Millsy brand, they look like they are providing 100% new like they do say in their listings. And I do look forward to trying out some of the other graphics cards they have on display because they're bringing in a $200 card shipped worldwide that's gonna be a great benchmark for people who are say living in an area where they can't get access to decent prices. Or of course, it just goes as a benchmark for people living in an area with lots of PC parts but say for instance, sellers don't want to budge, you can just say, well, look, man, if you're not going to sell me a decent price for your graphics card, it's overpriced. I'm just going to go buy from AliExpress. And in terms of the shipping times, it took about a week to get to me in Japan, but it can take around two weeks, even up to a month, depending on where you live. In Australia, it usually takes around two weeks to get my items if I'm uh, ordering off AliExpress. But then there's the last thing as well, of course, and that is AliExpress. It's not for everyone. I know some people don't want to uh, buy off an international seller, especially if you know you have problems with your local post. For instance, stuff sometimes goes missing or things get damaged in post. Then I'd definitely recommend going buying off a local retailer. Or of course, if the price is not really justified for buying international, in the case of Japan here, when I checked just before making this video, I can get an RX 6600 uh, desktop variant, the Mech, for about 207 US dollars shipped to my door. So not only will I get here in two days, but I've also got a local warranty within Japan. And so I'd definitely go get the desktop variant for that extra $8. But say for instance, if where you live, they're going for $350, then something like this 6600M is definitely a good choice. Though if you are thinking about buying this graphics card, the unit I have in my hand is definitely a decent option. I would buy a local card if it's only a little bit more expensive. But again, if you live in a part of the world where you can't get access to decent prices, they just suck, then this is definitely gonna be a very good option. Of course, from the same seller in the same listing, if you don't feel comfortable getting the mobile variant, they also have a desktop variant going for $30 more, which isn't bad value. I think the RX 6600 is an extremely good value card at $200 or even sub $200. It's finally making PC gamers feel like PC gaming is normal again after this whole crypto mining boom and now bust. And of course, as always guys, check your local markets. People are telling me in the United States that they're getting RX 6700 XTs for $150 used. They work absolutely fine. I'm hearing about 2080 Ti's going for $250. Of course, in Japan, I think those deals won't flow through as well as they will in the US especially the UK and Australia. And so I look forward to, when I get back to Australia, giving you coverage on used deals. Though in the meantime, if you're after a decent new graphics card from a brand that looks like they're hitting hard with value, 
then this card is a good one. Though I don't know, one thing I'm not sure about is since it is the M variant on a desktop chip, I do see the possibility of AMD perhaps clamping down on AliExpress and making this no longer available. They have done this in the past with the Ryzen 5 3500X. They did this years ago. When that came out, that was a shade over a hundred bucks. It was a really good CPU for gaming and AMD just completely locked out anyone international from buying that CPU overseas. It was actually really surprising to see. So when things are coming in at too good of a deal, you can always expect the big three tech giants to make sure that you can't get too good of a victory. But in this case, it's available right now. It's a decent deal. So if you want to get it, it's up there for sale. Anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you appreciate all the benchmarks and also me getting this 6600M off AliExpress so you don't have to, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also, if you've stayed this far and you're enjoying the Tech Yes videos, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the vids as soon as they drop. But also, if you want to see any more crazy AliExpress stuff, I do have an actual whole AliExpress build in the works because the prices are getting very attractive for some of the parts on AliExpress. It's not just this 6600M, for example. They've got the 5600, the 5500. And also, if you get those CPUs in a B550, you can then also take advantage of smart access memory, which will also work on this M variant. Though, if you guys want to see anything else, do let us know in the comment section below. And we've got the question of the day here too, which comes from Soft Bread. And they ask, how do you treat rust on Ryzen CPU pins and motherboards? And so in terms of rust on Ryzen CPUs, I've actually never come into rust on Ryzen CPUs, but I have come into rust on LGA pins on older Intel motherboards. And what I do for that is I spray on multi-purpose spray, AKA WD-40. I let that soak in and then I use a very soft brush and just go back over and forward over that with that brush. And that seems to work really well because it's really only the tips that you have to worry about on the LGA pins. But I think with Ryzen CPU pins, you do have to actually worry about the whole pin itself. So that would be the method I would use. And yeah, hopefully that answers that question. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.